This is the case of Millie. Millie is a six and a half year old domestic long hair feline, female spade. She recently has developed loose stools. Millie has a normal to increased appetite. Millie was taken to the referring veterinarian for evaluation of the loose stools and increased appetite. Screening blood work was performed. As you can see, the UA showed a normal specific gravity of 1.052. The CBC results were all normal. Chemistry panel results showed a mildly elevated cholesterol at 332 with the reference range up to 218, a normal total T4 of 3.0 with the reference range up to 4, and an elevated free T4 done by equilibrium dialysis of 59, again with a reference range up to 35. On physical examination, the heart and lung sounds were normal. There was no evidence of a murmur. The abdominal palpation was also normal. Millie was presumed to be hyperthyroid based on the blood work and clinical signs and was placed on 2.5 milligrams of tapazole given BID per os. A recheck examination was recommended in approximately 14 days. On repeat blood work, again, all values were within normal limits and both the T4 and free T4 values had decreased. Unfortunately, Millie was developing small scab or ulcerative type lesions on the face between the ears and the eyes. Also note at this time, during a routine nail trim, there was prolonged bleeding times when one of the nails was quicked. The owners then elected for radioiodine therapy for hyperthyroidism in light of the suspect tapazole reactions. The choice was to inject radioiodine based on the clinical signs and blood work alone or to inject radioiodine only after confirmation of the diagnosis of hyperthyroidism with the diagnostic thyroid scan. In Millie's case, the owners chose the latter. As is routine, thoracic films were performed prior to any thyroid imaging or injection of radioiodine. The lateral view shows no significant abnormalities. The cardiac size and shape, pulmonary vessels, trachea and lungs are normal. The cranial abdomen is also normal. The VD view of the thorax is also within normal limits. These are images from the thyroid scan. The thyroid scan was performed using four millicuries of technetium that was given IV. Technetium is an iodine analog and will accumulate in glandular tissues in the body. As you can see, the image on the left is a ventral view that shows the thyroid glands themselves, the salivary glands, and in this particular case there was a small amount of uptake in the nasal mucosa. The thyroid scan in Millie's case was judged to be normal on this view as there is not significantly more uptake within the thyroid glands as that seen by the salivary glands. The salivary glands and thyroid glands have similar uptake. The image on the top right represents a close-up view of the thyroid glands only. This view is used to evaluate the morphology of the thyroid glands. And in Millie's case, both thyroid glands were not enlarged they had homogeneous uptake with tapering margins and no evidence of fascial plane invasion. Finally, the image on the bottom right represents a lateral view of the thoracic region and neck. In this image, on the far left side of this image, normal thyroid tissue is seen. The faint area of uptake in the mid portion of this image represents normal blood pool in the heart and the uptake seen on the right side of this image represents normal uptake in the stomach mucosa. There are no abnormal areas of uptake in the mediastinal region. 
Based on the thyroid scan, we can confirm that Millie is indeed not hyperthyroid. At this time, repeat total T4s and free T4s were submitted to a different outside lab for comparison. As you can see, both the T4 and the free T4 values came back in the middle of the normal range. There are a few lessons to be learned with Millie's case. If a thyroid scan had not been performed, an unnecessary dose of radioiodine may have been given. Unfortunately, this type of case is not uncommon. Approximately 10 to 15 percent of cats with elevated T4s or free T4s are proven to be not hyperthyroid once they are scanned. On the other side of the coin, there are another 10 to 20 percent of cats that are confirmed to be hyperthyroid using a thyroid scan that will have normal blood work. In other words, their T4s or free T4s are not elevated. These cats are termed occult hyperthyroid cats, and without the thyroid scan, the diagnosis of hyperthyroidism would have been missed. So insist on a thyroid scan. A diagnostic thyroid scan using technetium in cats is a very important diagnostic tool to confirm hyperthyroidism prior to the administration of radioiodine. Medically, it is the proven right thing to do. If not, you may end up with a permanently hypothyroid cat that still doesn't have a correct diagnosis as to what is wrong. And you may be out a significant amount of money. Incidentally, Millie is happy and healthy and doing fine, and the soft stools have resolved on their own.